Hi, this is Brad the Solar Guy. I'm here to answer all your questions about residential solar. Today, I'm going to geek out a little bit without really geeking out about solar equipment. So let's talk about that. Your residential solar system basically has three parts to it. The most obvious part is the solar panels and then the wiring and then the inverter system. So let's talk about those in order. So the solar panels themselves, in my opinion, are the least important choice for you to make. I think there are some things that are important, but really it comes down to aesthetics. I think that if you get a black on black panel from one of the major manufacturers from a reputable solar company, that you will get a panel that will function just as it's supposed to based on its wattage. So panel specs include the wattage of the panel and then also things like the efficiency and then also things like the degradation factor. So you can pay more money for a more efficient panel and people think that's wonderful to have a more efficient panel and it might be important, but chances are it's not because really the efficiency doesn't affect the wattage of the panel, it just affects the size of that panel. And so a 400 watt panel at 21% efficiency is just a little bit smaller than a 400 watt panel at 19% efficiency and not very much smaller. So on most roofs, it actually, the efficiency doesn't really matter a whole lot. It certainly can on a small roof, but you pay a lot for those more premium panels with higher efficiency and it usually doesn't pay. So the best thing is to be sort of in the sweet spot of the good priced panels that aren't too expensive for their wattage. And right now that's right around 400 watts or so. So from anywhere from 385 to 425 is pretty common for what most solar companies are offering and you pay a premium for above that. The other thing that solar panel manufacturers put in their specs and people seem to think is important are the degradation rates. And they may in fact end up being an important factor, but I've been doing solar for 10 years. I've looked at lots of data from systems that are 10 years old. I have a system that's almost eight years old myself. And in the wild, I personally have seen no evidence of any degradation whatsoever. Now, of course, panels are going to last decades, so it certainly could come, you know, after the first decade. But so far, I haven't seen any evidence that there's really any going to be any degradation at all, much less a difference in these panels that are supposed to degrade slower. So my two systems that I have on my roof are just generic panels that aren't special high wattage, they aren't high efficiency, they're just the general offering of the solar company at the time that I did it. And I literally don't even know the brand name of the first set that I purchased. I know the wattage of the system and I know the panels are black on black. But other than that, it doesn't matter to me because the wattage of the system is really how it's gonna perform, in my opinion. Now again, I could be wrong, maybe there's gonna be a dip, but I, you just pay a lot more upfront for that potential more production a decade or two or three down the road. So to me, it doesn't seem like a good bet. And I don't think it's very important. So I think as long as you're getting a relatively good wattage black on black panel from one of the seven major manufacturers, I think you're going to be doing fine in terms of the panel. Now, some people like to geek out on stuff and they get the best panel, but again, you're going to have to pay for that. So I don't think there's any value there personally or professionally. The second part of the system is the wiring. Now, that's why really just having good electricians do the work is super important. So whatever solar company you choose, if you choose to go solar, make sure that they're not subbing out the electricians because those might be guys who don't do solar regularly or might just not care because their subcontractors or whatever the case may be, or it might just be harder to correct their work or find out information, whatever it is. Just having subcontractors can add layers of communication issues and that can compound problems along with other issues. So having a crew that is not subcontractor, but a crew that is you know directly employed by your solar installer is really important because they're gonna more, be more, way more likely to have good electricians that absolutely know what they're doing. So if they, that is the case and they do a good job of the wiring, the wiring should be as reliable as the wiring in your house and shouldn't be a problem for you know a long, long time, decades even, and maybe never. But if it's not done well, it's one of the most obvious things that can go wrong with the solar system. So you know that's, that is one of the main reasons why it's important what solar company does your installation. So the third part of your system is the inverter system. So solar electricity is DC and your house is AC. And so solar needs to be inverted to work in your house and on the grid. Now, I think this is the most important choice for solar in terms of the technology choice that you can make. So I think probably the most important choice really is, is who installs it 
and takes care of the system for you. But a close second is the inverter. Now there's basically three kinds of inverter. The first kind of inverter and just the way that solar is wired, it's called a string inverter and it works just like Christmas tree lights used to work, which is that, you know, I, it was my job when I was five and six years old on December 20th or whatever it was to plug the Christmas tree lights in and nothing would come on. And I'd have to find the one or two or three bulbs that were out that had caused the whole string to go out. And so that's what happens with solar with a string inverter is that if you shave or snow covering one panel, the entire array will lose production. So if you have half a panel covered, then the entire array will work at half. So here in the Northeast in Massachusetts, that doesn't work at all. We can't use string inverters here. Although Tesla is selling one that, that really cheaply that companies are installing. So that's a that's a whole other story. But anyway, so string inverters are pretty much not usable in my opinion here in the Northeast. There are some circumstances where it's okay, but for the most part, they're not. And to solve that issue with the string inverter and the shade, issue two technologies were invented. The first technology is a technology called a microinverter. So basically they took the inverter and they shrunk it down. And what they do is they install it behind every panel and it solves the shade problem. It's no longer susceptible to the string inverter problem. Each panel acts independently. So if you have snow or shade on one panel, it does not affect the production of the panel next to it. So it works amazing. It's a great technology. It works really well and it's incredibly popular in residential solar here in the US, but it does add one major problem in my opinion, which is that because you shrink down that inverter, you've taken the heaviest working technology of the whole system and now you've shrunk it down and you're putting it on the roof under every panel. And I'll get into why I think that's not a great choice. There's actually a couple of reasons. The third kind of inverter system is a DC optimized inverter system. That system, rather than putting a microinverter under every panel, they just put a DC optimizer under every panel. It does the same job that the microinverter does in terms of separating each panel. So it gets rid of the shade string inverter problem so that if you have shade on one panel, all the other panels on the string will work optimally. So if there are any of them are covered with shade, they will not work, but any of their neighbors will work just fine. It does that incredibly well. It also gives you per panel access for monitoring, which is incredibly nice. The microinverters do that as well. So that's fantastic. So it gives you all the modular level technology that you want and need, but what it doesn't do is invert the electricity at the, at the panel level. And that it turns out is actually really fantastic for a couple of reasons. But what it means is, is that the DC optimizers, which are on the roof under the panels, have a very, very low failure rate. And that's really important because I didn't cover this when I talk about the solar panels, but generally solar panels, statistically, if they make it through the first year, they're statistically incredibly unlikely to break until end of life. So it's not like they're gonna like work half or anything like, you know, break in year 12, it's to, you know, be a one in a million shot. So it can happen, but it's incredibly unlikely. So once we install the panels and get through the first year, it's, we don't need to get back up on the roof for the panels. And so that's why I, I don't like microinverters because microinverters break because all inverters break. And so I like DC optimizers because DC optimizers have incredibly low failure rate, just like regular electronics do. So again, once you make it through that first year, it's really, really unlikely that you'll have anything on the roof fail if you do a DC optimized system, which is just smart for maintenance, I think, especially these days when it's so incredibly difficult to get anybody to come out to your house to fix anything. I don't care how good your warranty is, how good the company is. If they have to come out less, that's good for everybody. So that's the big downside, I think, to the microinverter because every inverter we install, we know will fail. It's not like a percentage of them will fail. It's not like, oh, most of them will make it for 20 years. No, they're, they're all going to break. They might make it, most of them might make it 10 years, but they're all gonna fail. And so if you have a 30 panel system on your roof and 30 microinverters, you're gonna have to fix all 30 of those microinverters at some point and maybe more than that. So again, I don't really care how good your warranties are. I think that's going to be a pain. And I think it's unlikely that they're all going to get fixed fast. So I think that's a bad choice. The DC optimized system has a single inverter that we mount either, you know, in your basement by your main service panel or outside on the outside of the house near your meter. Those are the two most likely places that we would mount it. And yes, it will also break. And when it does, the entire system will fail. And that is not great, right? But it is kind of great because you're going to know it's down really quick. <laughs> it's going to be very obvious. And also it's mounted at chest height and we just have to replace one of them. And once we do that, it's going to be good for another 10 to 25 years. So we just think, or I think that the DC optimized inverter system offers a tremendous amount of advantage in that it, you are only gonna have to replace one of them probably only once or maybe twice during the lifetime of your solar system, rather than having tons of them on the roof that you're gonna have to fiddle with and worry about and be concerned that you're not having somebody come out to fix them all the time. So the other big difference between a microinverter system and a DC optimized inverter system is that when you couple batteries to them, the DC optimized system has an even bigger advantage 
which is that solar is DC and batteries are DC. So if you have a DC optimized system, you can add a battery to it without inverting the electricity. So you can have the solar come off the roof and go directly into the battery and then just get pulled through the inverter one time when you need it to use it. Also means that when you're using it, you can also charge it at the same time. And, and it's a very efficient system. But if you wanna add a battery to a microinverter system, you have to do an AC coupled system because you don't have DC coming off the roof. You have DC in the solar panels that get inverted at the, at the panel level, then you AC coming off the roof and then to get it back into the battery you have to invert it again and then to get it out of the battery you have to invert it a third time and that also means you can't charge it at the same time because the inverter can't be going two different directions so it's less efficient has less utility they're more expensive it's just not as good a battery system at all and so for those reasons I think that even if you're not thinking you're ever going to get a battery you don't know what you might do in the future what a future homeowner might want to do so from my perspective getting a micro inverter system for solar doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's my two cents. I hope this was helpful. Oh, let me just make a caveat. I'm not trying to say microinverter systems are terrible. Uh, they're a good technology. Millions of people have them. They they work. I, I, I just think they're not as good as the other system for the reasons I, I pointed out. I'm not trying to say they're terrible. They're a good technology. I just think DC optimized inverters are better. So I hope this was helpful and please leave your questions or comments down below. Have a great day.